MEV, or maximal extractable value, has been a hot topic, especially for the most popular smart contract platform in the industry, Ethereum. From harming users to even threatening Ethereum centralization and censorship resistance, MEV has come to be one of Ethereum's biggest issues. So let's find out exactly what MEV is, how it works, and how it affects the Ethereum ecosystem. MEV refers to the profit that can be extracted by miners or validators who use their privileged access and power to include, exclude, or reorder transactions in a block. But let's unpack that a little bit more by recapping how transactions take place on Ethereum in the first place. When you initiate a transaction on Ethereum, there is a period when it'll be pending, waiting to be added to the blockchain. During this period, your transaction will be stored in a sort of waiting area known as a mempool. Since miners or validators have the power to access these transactions and are responsible for adding them into blocks, they also have the power to include and order them. And this is where MEV comes in. But still, what impact could simply reordering some transactions on the blockchain have? Well, a lot. According to Flashbots, an MEV-focused research organization, over 687 million has been extracted from transaction reordering on Ethereum since January 2020. The worst part is, of course, that in many cases, MEV is sometimes referred to as the invisible tax as it is extracted at the expense of honest users trying to make transactions. However, other forms of MEV are actually beneficial to the functioning of the Ethereum ecosystem, but more on these in just a little bit. MEV is a highly technical and complex topic out of the scope of this video to discuss it in full. So let's just look at some of the practical examples of some MEV strategies in action, starting with a healthy type of MEV, arbitrage. In crypto, tokens might have varying prices on different DEXs. Therefore, arbitrageurs and MEV bots can profit from this opportunity by purchasing, say, Ethereum at $1,650 on SushiSwap and selling it on Uniswap at $1,700. Provided other users are not harmed in the process, this form of MEV is considered non-toxic since it is essential in maintaining price stability across DeFi. Another healthy type of MEV comes in the form of liquidations. For you to take out a loan in lending protocols like Aave, you'll have to deposit some collateral first. Suppose the market takes a dip and the value of your collateral drops below the required ratio. Due to the permissionless nature of dApps, your collateral can now be liquidated by anyone with the know-how to do so and you'll have to pay a liquidation fee. This is where the MEV opportunity arises. MEV searchers will try to determine the borrowers that are most likely to be liquidated and be the first to submit a liquidation transaction, thereby pocketing the liquidation fee. Now, this MEV strategy is also considered beneficial since, for one, it helps in making sure that the lender is paid swiftly and it also prevents the protocol from accumulating bad debt. However, like I said, not all MEV opportunities are healthy. So let's take a look at some toxic ones, starting with front running. So front running happens when MEV searchers use bots to scan the mempool for potentially profitable transactions and replicate it with a higher gas price so that it goes through first. That's not quite all. Since MEV opportunities are so highly sought after, multiple front runners will be competing for that transaction to be included in the next block, therefore congesting the network and raising gas prices for everyone else. As an extension of just plain front running, another malicious type of MEV is known as sandwiching or a sandwich attack. So say you place an order to buy $2,000 worth of asset X on Uniswap. Searchers will first identify this or other large pending transactions that will likely cause a price change of the asset. Then the sandwich attack goes like this. 
First, the MEV bots will front run you to insert their buy transaction before yours, which bumps up the price of the asset first. Then your buy transaction is executed, though at a higher price than you initially intended. Your order also bumps the asset's price slightly. The attacker then immediately dumps their tokens right after your transaction to complete the sandwich attack. The attacker benefits from the price change, while on the contrary, this results in an undeniably worse trade for you as you will experience larger slippage and receive a lesser amount of asset X than you would have initially received at $2,000. So what are some of the ways to tackle MEV? Well, ways to tackle MEV are an active area of research for Ethereum developers and contributors. Currently, there are several methods available such as DAP level solutions, such as CowSwap, which in brief, submit traders transactions in batches in order to counter reordering. Users can also take individual preventative measures such as linking up to Flashbots or Eden Network's custom RPCs, which can minimize MEV attacks. One of the major solutions being developed is known as PBS, or Proposer Builder Separation, which would limit centralization risks as parties that build blocks cannot be the same ones that propose it. Flashbots, an organization dedicated to democratizing MEV extraction and mitigating its negative impacts, developed the most widely used implementation of PBS, a software known as MEV Boost, which allows validators to outsource the work of capturing MEV opportunities. Ironically, however, MEV Boost has arguably made Ethereum more centralized, given that post-merge, over 65% of all Ethereum blocks are proposed through MEV Boost. On top of that, censorship issues have also been raised after the Tornado Cash saga when Flashbots announced that they'll begin censoring transactions to be OFAC compliant. In fact, over 60% of Ethereum transaction blocks are now OFAC compliant post-merge. It's important to mention that the Flashbot solution is considered an out-of-protocol version of PBS, which, as the name suggests, simply means that it exists outside of the protocol. Ethereum plans to implement its own inbuilt PBS and even tweaked its roadmap to specifically cater to MEV issues. This will come via the Scourge upgrade, which, as Vitalik Buterin puts it, aims to ensure reliable and fair, credibly neutral transaction inclusion. All in all, the Scourge may turn out to be another significant upgrade to Ethereum, especially now that the ecosystem's security and censorship resistance is involved. So make sure to give us your thoughts on the subject and watch this video right here to learn more about Ethereum's updated roadmap.